Hey guys, it's Katie and welcome back to my YouTube channel today. Today's video is the second in the three-part series that I'm sharing this week on my channel. Today we are going to be doing a fun reverse stencil technique and I'm going to show you guys a couple of different ways to do that. Earlier this week, I shared part one in the video series, and I will link that below, and then when I post the third video, I'll link that as well. So they'll all be linked in all three of the videos, so you can watch them if you happen to catch this later on. So today's video is not going to be as in-depth. I showed you the very detailed descriptions of how I create the wood signs in the first video. Today is just a fun little take on it and is much simpler and I hope that this inspires you to get even more craftier. So let's get started on the project and then make sure you check out the other two videos in this series. So the very first thing I'm going to do is stain my board. I am staining it the color that I want to show through on the design. So whatever you lay down as your base coat is actually going to be your design color. So this is basically just the opposite of everything I shared with you guys in the first video. So I stained my board and I let it set and now it's time to weed out my uh, Aura Mask stencil vinyl. Now normally when I'm doing a sign, I weed out the word or whatever it is that I want shown on the board. For a reverse stencil, you're going to do the opposite. You're going to weed out the excess and leave the design or the word on the backing. So this is similar as if you were going to actually just apply vinyl to your sign. You would weed out the excess and leave the design on your backing. And that's what we're doing for the reverse stencil. Later on, I'm going to share with you guys the hot mess method of this, and you know that that's going to be right up my alley. So stay tuned to the second part of the video. So I'm applying my paper transfer tape. That is my favorite transfer tape because it doesn't stick super well. One thing that I thought I recorded and I didn't was when I applied this to the board, I'm burnishing this on so it will peel off the back and then I applied it to the board and because my backing is um, stained, I did apply a layer of Mod Podge and I don't know what happened to that video footage. So I applied a layer of Mod Podge just to help seal the stencil onto the board so I wouldn't get any um, bleeding. And then I'm just now applying a very light coat of the white chalk paint. You don't want to push hard, even though I did seal this with the Mod Podge, you still don't want to push too hard because you just never know. So I always go over with a really, really light coat to begin and then go back over again. Because the background is a little bit darker and I'm applying white to the front of it, I do know that I'm probably going to have to apply two coats of paint to this in order to cover it really, really well. So the background of the actual sign is going to be white. And then the image that I cut out is actually going to be the stain color. So you are basically just doing everything backwards. And that's why they call it the reverse stencil. Um, the images that I'm using today were both found in the Cricut Design Space. I thought they were super cute, especially this little dog love paw. Um, I think it was a heart love. I don't remember the name of it, but if I do find the name of it, I will link it in the description box below. But there's a bunch of these cute little heart images, <coughs> and they've got different things inside of them. So now that I've got my two coats of paint and I let it dry completely, I am removing the stencil vinyl and showing you guys the awesome outcome at the end. One thing I didn't link up in my first video was an X-Acto knife of some sort, which helps to peel off 
the stencil vinyl a lot easier than your weeding tool can. You want to make sure that you go at it flat and you don't gouge the wood. So I am going to go back and add that to the supply list on the first video. All of these videos, like I said, are going to be linked up down below. So once we get this off of there, I am going to go ahead and do some sanding around the edges to kind of distress it. And then it's time to get going on the second one. Now this is the exact same thing, but they call this the hot mess version. And look it, that is a hot mess. Of course you know that I am going to do something rainbow-ish and add a little bit of fun color to the day. So I'm just using acrylic paints this time and I'm not really going all the way to the edge. I'm not covering the whole thing. That really isn't as necessary. But this is something that would be super fun for kids, especially during quarantine time. Give them a board and let them paint it however they want. It can be as messy or as perfect or as beautiful as they want to do it. This is a really fun project that anybody can do. And I'm just making sure that I get enough color around the edges that it's going to um, cover my whole stencil that I have cut out. And I just went ahead and pre-weeded this and got it ready for this part of the video. But I do want to make sure that I have gotten <clears throat> um, paint everywhere so there's not going to be any hidden. But you don't have to be super perfect and get it all the way to the edges. And then once it is dry, you want to make sure that it is completely dry, especially with the acrylic paint. Then I'm going to put the stencil on there and make sure that it's all going to be covered up because the stencil part, the blue part, is what is going to be showing through. Um, I am going to go ahead and use some paint and seal this just because I have some leftover paint here. So I'm just going to use some of that and make sure that it's sealed properly. Um, like I said before, you can also use Mod Podge, but it's just kind of making sure that it's not going to bleed through when I get the white on there and ruin anything. part of it just making sure that everything dries really well and you want to make sure that you color cover up all of that color with your white and this is a bit more intense design so you want to be really careful and make sure that you get it all weeded out really well and don't gouge anything and don't make a mess etc etc <laughs> but once you peel it off it is just beautiful and it turns out so amazing this is really a fun um version of the reverse stencil technique so i hope that you guys enjoyed that i hope you enjoyed both of these videos that i've shared today and the other day and that you'll come back for the last one on saturday i'm going to post that here on my youtube channel and then afterwards they will all be linked up down below and that will be so much fun i really appreciate you guys joining me i hope that you learned something and i hope that you come back and check us out for future videos and more diy projects
For more behind the scenes on today's video, as well as bonus DIYs and just a little bit of fun, make sure you're following me over on Instagram. That's where the party's at. Thanks so much for watching.